Hi, um, Sophie Kirkham. I'm a calm, confident birth teaching, hypnobirthing, doula and mother. And I run a practice in the UK um, preparing couples for confident birth. So I'm just doing a piece right now um, to vlog about the new scientist um, who published an article this week um, all about uh, the dangers of the vaginal birth and the, the picture um, for the article is from the Monty Python meaning of life with a woman laying on her back in the machines that go ping. I don't know if you've seen it, but most people are familiar with this skit. And um, in the same film, they have a bit of a woman who has loads of kids and it's that get that for me, Deirdre, would you? And the baby just comes out. So this woman's doing the washing up and seems quite straightforward and they've got that compare and contrast of the highly medicalized model where you need tools and drugs and machines go ping versus the woman at home just having a baby in the kitchen. So why do I feel the need to respond to this? The, re the reasons are many. Um, generation upon generation upon generation women are told that uh, vaginal birth is dangerous and here we are again some obstetricians wanting to have court judgments made um, in order to really, really stress the dangers of vaginal birth. But hey, here's a few myth busters for you. So one of the things that nobody tells you um, is that, you know, when you've had a kid and you've birthed your kid vaginally, actually sex is loads better and orgasms can be better too. And that's taboo and it doesn't get discussed. But you know what? Also, Vaginas are amazing things. Women do all sorts of things with their vaginas. One of those things being birthing babies out of them. And throughout pregnancy, the body changes in readiness for birth. It, it begins to flower. It produces relaxing hormone that makes the muscles softer and more elastic. And that includes the vagina and the vulva. And I want to just really respond in kind to people saying that, you know, I'm just going to quote, while vaginal um, birth is, of course, the natural um, end point of pregnancy, but natural does not necessarily mean good. And while it's right to inform women that the risks of a non-medical uh, of non-medical c-sections the playing field is not a level one pregnant women who choose a vaginal delivery are not officially warned about the possibility of bad outcomes for themselves or their babies uh, what are you saying when you write that the inference is that cesarean section birth is easier safer better no it isn't it's major abdominal surgery it's going to take some recovery time when you want to be able to move around easily and move around in your home and maybe pick up your other children that you've already had rather than nursing a sore delicate body which has got to heal and feed a newborn child so let's look at some of the reasons as to why it seems that these um extreme uh, examples of women being damaged their vulvas their perineums and even worse tears in labor why is that happening? Well, in hypnobirthing, one of the things that's vastly different than medical labour um, and the active management of labour is where women are coached to push their baby out and the position that those women are in when they do that. So if you're familiar with One Born Every Minute or programmes of the like, there are many that I don't watch because as a birth birth, I can't bear it. I just... I want to see women lead their own labour, I want to see them feeling empowered and get in positions of choice. But in these births, what you'll notice is women are often reclining, lying down. And when they're lying down, if I just use my hand to demonstrate the vaginal outlet, and we say that this is the perineum, not only is the vagina pointing upwards, and if those women are then put into a lithotomy position where they have to put their legs into stirrups, Vaginas pointing at the ceiling, so they might as well get into a headstand for all it's good, all the good it's doing them, for birthing their child. What you want is to avoid a baby's head coming out and all the force being on the perineum. It's going to give, it's going to give, it's going to tear, it's going to happen. That's what happens. So, what about if the woman's in an upright position and then the loading of the baby's head pressing against the vaginal outlet is spread all around as it's meant to be? 
so that the perineum stretches and in turn the vulva, the labia, the labia minora and majora, they're all open and they're designed to. When your baby's head crowns, there's a crown of labia around the head as well as it being the crown of the baby's head that's coming out. Now in hypnobirthing, our strong belief is that in a kind of normal labour that's been uh, had a natural onset rather than a, a drug induced one where the oxytocin system is working well or the womb which is super powerful is working perfectly then you'll get surges where the whole womb begins to literally squeeze and push the baby out where you don't have to do anything on top of what the womb's already doing so the womb does the work to get the baby out so all this push, 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 keep it coming, push into your bottom like you're having a poo. That's not this expulsive reflex. The expulsive reflex of the womb is a completely involuntary act, a little bit like diarrhea. Most of us, unfortunately, have had diarrhea. And we know that you're on the loo, hopefully, and that it's it's happening. And it, and it comes in waves. And that's a bit like the surges of the womb, those waves of muscular activity in the uterus that help to push that baby down. And that was my experience birthing my son. In my humble experience, one birth, I didn't have to do anything on top of what my womb was doing. I didn't have to do force pushing. And I was in an, an open and upright position. And I think long term, women need to be informed about the dangers of forced pushing. So let's flip this argument and say, you know what, in order for us to preserve our vaginas and our vulvas, in order for us to enjoy sex, for us to enjoy not recovering from a really bad tear, or worse, <laughs> then let's give it time. The, but the vagina is designed to stretch and it will happen in good time. So if mum is okay and baby is, in okay, is okay in labour, why do we need to rush these things? Why do we need to force them? Okay, so that's my main point. Um, and I just wanted to really finish with a little story. Um, years and decades ago, a really, really great midwife, his name was Mary Cronk, um, was, had trained in midwifery and it was her stint on a labour ward. Um, and at the time the protocol was that you would be brought in to have your baby, you would be completely shaved, so all your pubic hair would be removed, you'd be given an enema, which <laughs> was all done without really your consent. You were told that it would happen, and obviously your body, your decision, you decide what happens to it. And the other thing that then would happen is that during birthing a baby, a woman would be cut, so a perineum would be cut. And this is all based on the fact that people at the time, probably men, didn't really get how stretchy and amazing and able to flower the vaginal outlet is when given the time and the positioning and the safety and love and nurturing, gentle experience midwife care. Okay, so Mary Cronk, um, this is this is my version of her story. Um, was supposed to perform an episiotomy on a woman who she was with in labour, and at the time everything was super super sterile. Um, they were quite fanatical about sterilisation of stuff apparently. And um, she dropped her scissors that she would have performed the procedure with on the floor, rendering them um, sterile. And she didn't cut the woman, and the woman birthed the baby, and everything was fine. And so later she had to go and explain this to uh, the doctor in charge, who said something a bit like, well, you should have done it. And Mary said, actually, in my medical opinion, I didn't deem, didn't deem it necessary. And so therefore, I didn't do it, and I'm not going to be doing them unless they deemed them medically necessary and appropriate. And the doctor said, well, well you should have done it or something. And um, Mary said, okay, well, you know, if I force that on somebody, would you be prepared to come to court with me if she accuses us of assault? And bear witness, because that's what we're doing. So we look back through the history of how we look after women in labour. We've got some really guilty secrets and some nasty stuff that's gone on over time but one of the main hangovers still is making women lie on beds okay it's okay to lay on your left hand side someone hold your leg up that's still keeping the birth path open but getting women to lie down and shout at them and bark at them to push that's the most unnatural and bizarre thing 
and it's not particularly wonderful for the people who have to do it. I should imagine midwives probably struggle with them to do that. Um, so yes, let's just have a little think about flipping it round and saying actually vaginas are supposed to stretch and open and we need time to do so. So rather than making women hold their breath and push, like having a poo, which is completely different because when you've got a uterus it's very different than having a poo, um, let that natural descent occur. Let women choose and adopt the positions that they need to during labour. And I'll put a little link in here um, that's all about uh, how to do perineal massage and stretching. It's a little video that I did a year and a half ago, and 140,000 people all around the world have watched it because they're all really interested in long term looking after a vagina so they can enjoy it for years to come. So, for those people who want to scaremonger and say that vaginal birth is dangerous, etc., etc., I'd like you to check in on your practices first before you start slating what most of us doulas, hypnobirthers and midwives probably see as quite normal. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoyed this.